One of my big goals with our last short film was to use the camera movement and the camera placement in a way that supported the story. But what does that actually mean? How can we use cinematography in a creative way? For this project, I thought it'd be cool to try and show the relationship between the characters through the camera placement. For example, in this scene, the dealer is kind of looking out for Mark. There isn't any conflict between them. So I thought I could show that by having them both stand at an equal distance from the camera, a two shot, so they are sharing the frame. Whereas in this scene, it's a relationship of aggressive confrontation. So I decided to cover the whole scene in singles. So the characters are separated, opposite each other, rather than equal and sharing the same frame. When we see two brothers talking, they share the frame. Whereas when there's conflict between two characters, we cover it with singles, so they're separated. In theory, the audience might subconsciously recognize this visual pattern and therefore have a better understanding of the relationship between the characters. So it's only natural that for the beginning of the final scene, we had them in opposition, since Mark is going to take revenge. But when he kills the wrong person, that changes something. By the end of the scene, Mark and Connor are for the very first time standing on the same plane. Now both of them have killed, they share the same frame, they have something in common. And for me, that links in with the message of the film, about what revenge really achieves. Now I should say that this idea of using two shots for equality and singles when there's conflict is not really an established rule, it's not a cinematic convention. It was literally just an idea that I thought could work well for this particular film. And really, that's all you can do. If you feel like the best way to cover your film is with just tons of extreme close-ups, then you absolutely go for that. But what about camera movement? Some people see it just as a way to add visual interest or to help keep the audience's attention. But I personally feel like that's buying a pair of running shoes and expecting them to run a marathon for you. If your film is boring, then it's gonna take more than just a couple of crane shots to make it interesting for the audience. So for this short film, I decided to only use camera movement when the main character is moving towards his goal. In scene one, we're on sticks because Mark is yet to find his goal. Scene two doesn't have our main character in it, so it's still. Plus I felt like at this point Connor has complete control of the situation and a rock solid camera helps to show that. In scene three, the camera does move with Mark, but only after he's heard a vital piece of information that points him towards his goal of getting revenge. In scene four, he is confronting Connor directly, which is moving towards his goal. So the camera moves too, following with him as he pushes Connor against the wall. But it doesn't take long for Connor to take control and to start threatening him. So from that point onwards, the camera stays relatively still. Mark is no longer making progress. Then on set, JP, our cinematographer, suggested that we shoot this scene handheld, which I thought was a great idea, since it's the one time that Mark visibly expresses his anger. And we felt like a less stable camera helps to show that wild energy that's there in the early stages of revenge. For the second last scene, we go back to a static camera until we find out that he's buying a gun, at which point the camera very slowly starts to dolly in, but it's basically unnoticeable. But this time the camera is steady, since Mark appears to have cooled off from the previous scene. Now, following the theme, it makes sense that we start the final scene with a moving camera, since we're following Mark as he literally moves towards his revenge goal. And it's smooth, which reflects how he's totally focused, numb even. But by the end of the scene, we realize that he's failed his goal. Once again, Connor is in control, and so the camera stays completely still. Now, this is just one way that you can approach cinematography. Of course, there are absolutely no rules. But I guess my main point is that camera movement can do so much more than just spice up your film with some cool looking shots. So I do believe that camera angles and movement can help us to communicate ideas and emotions in our films. 
But if there's just one thing I've learned from making this short film, it's that yes, it's great to have all these ideas about storytelling through cinematography, but that's just one aspect of storytelling. For my next short film, I want to have a deeper understanding of who the characters are and how they would feel in these different situations. But most of all, how to get the audience to empathize with them. And there's no chance that comes from the cinematography alone. My name's Simon Cade, this has been DSLR Guide, and I'll see you next week. Thank you.